we realized that if we were to sell out every seat in every theater for one year, it would be, I think, five and a half million people a year in just our nine theaters, not counting all the other Broadway theaters. So Broadway is New York's biggest grossing tourist attraction. It's humongous. the director of operations for uh, an organization that owns uh, multiple Broadway theaters. Uh, as the director of operations, I handle everything from working with a, a show when they first come to see a theater, uh, to consider going into the theater, to license agreements, to um, facilities, dealing with the Department of Buildings in the city of New York, the Department of Justice. Um, the fire department, uh, anything having to do with um, staffing and labor operations that, that deal with any kind of staff in the theater, which is the house managers. It is a lot of work. Uh, it's, imagine, uh, imagine a juggler having nine balls to keep constantly going. Um, that's what it feels like every day. Because we look at every theater as uh, in, in three different uh, perspectives. So we look at um, structural, meaning the building itself has to be sound for, for people to occupy it. Safety, obviously, so everything has to be up to code for the city, meaning fire alarms, fire escapes, uh, exit doors, and then aesthetically. It has to look good from the outside all the way in and including the backstage area. Anything that anyone comes into the theater and sees, meaning the theater patrons, meaning the production, the, the artists when they come in, they have to feel like they want to come to work. So we have to make sure that the buildings in themselves are, are as nice and clean as possible. Someone's theater experience, I've learned, is from the moment they leave their house, they have already an expectation of the, the experience they're gonna have that night, right? So they, they leave their house, they're dressed up a little, maybe they go for dinner, maybe not. We are responsible to make sure that the moment they step on the curb out of the taxi cab or wherever they come from, that they're having a good experience. And that means that the staff has to be trained on customer service and how to you know, take care of special needs, um, if anyone has a disability, things like that. Um, so it's all of these things. Um, and then there's the inner workings of the building, and that's where it gets complicated because many of the theaters are more than 100 years old. And so the infrastructure of the buildings are not always sound. They need updating, they need maintenance, they need repair. The Palace Theater was built in 1913, 102. The Lunt Theater, I want to say 1906 or 1908 or so, it takes Again, many, many, many millions of dollars to renovate a theater and to bring it up to code, current code. Many, many, many millions of dollars. Oh, yes. <laughs> My name is Tom Clay, and I'm a company manager for the current Broadway show called It Should Have Been You. That's been open since April of this year. Uh, we have 1,020 seats. I would say in, in Broadway, it's about medium, medium size, yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's not the smallest, but it's not the biggest. Yeah, it's a two-level theater, and it work, it's mostly, mostly plays are done in this theater, but we're a very small musical, so it works there for, as well. How many seats uh, do you uh, have? The Palace, I think, has 1,700. Uh, that's one of the largest ones. Um, yeah. Wow, 1,700, and is it full every night? Every Currently, yes, it is full every night. In hour nine, we realized that if we were to sell out every seat in every theater for one year, it would be, I think, five and a half million people a year in just our nine theaters, not counting all the other Broadway theaters. So Broadway is New York's biggest grossing tourist attraction. It's humongous. Can you give me the process? What, what do you uh, have to be considered yeah. to, to be taken into yeah. the theater? The executives of the company choose which one they believe is going to be uh, a good selling show. Uh -huh. uh, and 
a partnership begins. Okay. Uh, they, they, once that's accepted, then it's a matter of finding the right theater uh, that's available at the right time. Uh -huh. um, and then the license agreement is worked out. They have to make sure that their show can fit into the certain theater, that uh, they consider how many seats are in the theater for ticket sales, whatever is available in the theater technically. Okay. Usually they come with everything all set. So oh. they come with a, a production company that is their, their production house, their tech company. Um, they have their own director, they come with their own choreographer, they come with their cast is usually lined up. Um, they come ready to go, but sometimes a theater has an opening for a few months, you know, between shows. So if a theater is available, they can go in right away. Um, the load-in can take anywhere from, I don't know, two weeks to four weeks, and then their previews begin and then they're opening. But it depends on how technical the show is. If the show is very technical and it requires a lot of adapt adaptation in the theater, um, if the stage needs to be adapted, if the rigging needs to be adapted, that can take longer. Uh, the company manager works for the general manager of a Broadway show who in turn works for the producer of the show. Uh, the producer of a Broadway show uh, is basically the head of the show. They raise the money, they find the property, uh, they select the director and if there's any stars usually in the show. Uh, then the producer hires the general manager to formulate the budgets, hire the rest of the crew and the staff, help negotiate contracts with the theater, with the actors, all of that. The production companies usually have an idea of how large their show is or how they envision their sets to be. You know, if, it, if it's a very large set, obviously, it can't go into a smaller theater. There are certain theaters like um, Lincoln Center, for example, mm -hmm. is a little bit different than Broadway because Lincoln Center is known for specific types of stage production. There's Lincoln Center Theater, which is usually musicals or plays, but then there are other stages at Lincoln Center that are known for dance or orchestra or something like that. Um, but Broadway can be anything. It can be a play or it could be a musical. Usually the larger houses are musical houses. Sure, I'm Laura Stanzik and I'm the casting director in New York, which I think you know. Yeah, I do. Um, and I cast primarily for theater okay. here, although I do some, some film work. All right. And a little bit of television every once in a blue moon. Okay. You're casting for? I do everything. Oh, okay. So I do singers and I do dancers and I do okay. I do everything. I think it's probably because my training was in both legit theater and musical theater, so I understand it. The casting director is hired early on uh, with the director, and they hold the auditions and decide on who they can, who they want in the show. Then the casting director will give uh, what we call a hire sheet to the general manager or myself and say we want to hire this person for this role. Um, and if there's any specific details, like the person has to be out of the show for a week or they need um, some excuse to go make a movie or something, that'll all be on their hire sheet. And also, particularly in the theater, you know, it requires some skill to get people to actually commit to theater if they have a career in film and television. And it requires real doggedness to get them to look at things and to get their representatives to take projects seriously because it's not the huge paying work that, you know, mm -hmm. television or film is. Yeah. Uh, doesn't always pay badly, and oftentimes, particularly on Broadway, you can do very well. Okay. But it's still not the same time. You know, I once had a big star's manager. I called him and said, you know, we would like this star to, to, to star in Broadway in a major, major, major show. And he said, oh my God, absolutely. Sure, sure, he'll do it. He'll do it in a heartbeat. And I was sitting there going, are, are you kidding me? He will? And she, he said, yes, absolutely. He gets paid $16 million for 12 weeks of work. So if you have $16 million, you know, he'll do your play for 12 weeks. And I was like, okay, very funny. You know, very funny. It's a different ball game, you know? Okay. A, a, on some level, the more important thing at this point is trying to get people to commit to theater that will sell tickets. And then there's the other thing, which is just managing the overwhelming crush of actors and finding the right ones. And then uh, the general manager, or usually the general manager, sometimes myself, will negotiate the salary, uh, any other things that they want, like if they have a special dressing room, um, 
but yeah, we don't make the decision, but we'll, you know, okay. make the deal for it. Okay. Yeah. You know, it depends on, on, on who people are in New York. You know, there is lead producers, there are groups of investors. I mean, generally my relationship is really only with the lead producer. Okay. Um, they generally don't make the choice of who the casting director is. Generally, it's the director who chooses. Sometimes the producer is the one with muscle. You know, and I have my favorites, and you know, everybody has their the people they like working with and the people they're comfortable working with. Um, you know, for a producer, the thing that's really important, I think, is that you don't waste their time, that a casting decision on Broadway is an expensive one, particularly if it's a musical, because you need to think about it. You know, there's the costumes, there's, it, you know, there's everything that's designed for, even if it's this one person in the ensemble, to make the wrong choice is, is a costly choice. So, so I think what producers appreciate is that you've done the groundwork, you've looked at everybody, you've only presented the people that the director really should see. They're people with good track records, they're reliable. There's not somebody who has a drug problem or is going to take a powder on you or has a complicated emotional life and won't be able to show up at the theater on time. You know, because nobody wants to fire anybody and it can be a very expensive process particularly on, um, you know, here, and I'm sure that this is different in Paris, you know, the contracts here are very specific. It's very difficult to fire an actor on Broadway. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. And much more difficult to fire an ensemble person than a principal, than a lead. Because you have to show three separate incidences that are very serious and they have to be written up and they have to the actor has to be given notice and have the attempt to cure the behavior and it's very complicated so when you hire that person and you have a hit show like cats or something they could be in the show for 20 years so you better make sure you really like that person <laughs> Who is in charge of the communication? The show's general manager. Producers pay for everything. <laughs> okay, so the theater pays for nothing. The theater pays for nothing, yes. The, okay. the, they come into a space which is uh, usually is called a four-wall rental. So okay. you come in, you have four walls, <laughs> nothing else. Um, you can use the facility. And everything else, the show has to pay for, which is the producers of the show. Okay. We spend a lot of money on advertising and marketing and promotions, um, especially now with, the, you know, back when I started, there was no real internet or online ticketing or marketing. It was all newspapers, uh, radio or television advertisements. Uh, so now um, what will happen again early on is the producer will select an advertising agency, uh, which is about three or four that basically focus on Broadway. Uh, select them and they will, or, or they can go through um, a pitch session where the ad agencies bid on the shows and say this is what we'll do for you and this is what kind of campaign we'll have. Uh, they'll create all the collateral, the posters, the flyers, uh, the digital banners for the websites, they'll again make the TV commercial, promotional materials, uh, but once that's selected then uh, we'll also have a, pr a press office which is separate. They focus mainly on um, anything you don't buy, so like a newspaper article or getting someone on a TV talk show. Um, so that press department handles that. Then a marketing department will also come on to handle uh, special promotions, reaching out to different groups or organizations that might buy tickets, um, doing all the social, Facebook, Twitter, uh, all of those, set up all those accounts and manage all of those. And then the advertising agency kind of oversees all of that as well as makes recommendations as to tell them you should buy these TV ads or you need to be in the newspaper or those kinds of things. So they kind of run the campaign. As, as soon as you can, yeah, because it takes a long time to, you have to develop artwork, you have to come up with, uh, you know, the, the plan, what time, it depends on what time of year you're opening is what kind of how you're going to launch the campaign. You don't want to really open in the middle of the summer because a lot of New Yorkers are gone for the summer, so you won't see a lot of shows opening in the summer. So they kind of work to lay out the marketing plan and advertising plan uh, as soon as they can, yeah. yeah. It, it takes time, yeah.